Hello and welcome to this first episode of Audible Anomaly. Guys, we finally did it. We are finally here. How are you guys? Good. I'm doing well. Doing pretty well. Yeah. How are you? I am doing great. Honestly, this has been a project that we've, you know, we were trying to work on for quite a bit of time. Uh, the original plan was uh, a little bit earlier, but you know, things happened, the, the world kind of collapsed and became this thing that, you know, we're kind of dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, but alas, here we are. Better late than ever, right? Yeah, absolutely. Alrighty, so let's, uh, let's get started here. Uh, this is Audible Anomaly. This is the podcast where we foster deep and meaningful conversation to help get you through your darkest days. Now, I am your host, Josh. A uh, little bit about myself. I've been streaming off and on for probably, what, 10 years now. Uh, and this is something that I've been trying to work toward and figure out how I wanted to do you know, a podcast. But uh, really, today we're focusing in on the meat and potatoes of of what we want to do with this podcast. So we're starting uh, we're starting off with today's episode, which is really a story more about our friendship, how we uh, got to meet each other, how we've kind of grown up in adulthood together because that's we've gone through quite a bit, frankly. Um, and kind of just dipping into that. So uh, let's go with Kevin. You are on the screen's left. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. I have not been streaming for 10 years. In fact, I don't stream <laughs> at all. Um, I just do my thing, man. I don't know why I'm here, but I am. And nothing. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, what, uh, what are you looking forward to most about the podcast here? I suppose what I'm looking forward to most is just uh, hanging out with you guys, longtime friends, getting into some deep conversations. What's not to love? Fair enough. Fair enough. Sounds good. All right, Davey, you are on the right hand side of the screen. Let me just mm -hmm. turn your way. Let's uh, let's hear a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Davey. Um, I am a, I guess, a quasi-professional comedian. Um, I've been doing improv for a long, long time. Uh, I also stream on Twitch, and I record another uh, comedy podcast called Strictly for the Bit. Um, I, I, what, m what's more to know about me? Um, well, uh, uh, what is your social? What is right? Yes, four nine six. No. Uh, <laughs> uh but no, yeah like, cool. what i'm looking forward to most is uh it's really been something i've wanted to do for a long time is just stare deeply and intently into kevin's gorgeous pool of eyes uh no i'm, I'm just looking forward to the conversations and um kind of talking unfiltered to a degree of Letting people know more that, you know, sometimes to just get through something, it's just a matter of talking with some friends. And obviously it doesn't solve all the world's problems, but yeah, it's just a matter of talking sometimes. So, not to keep quiet anymore and talk about things I want to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely think that we have a degree of holding a lot in. I mean, especially, I think it's easier to do right now do do the whole pandemic since we're not yeah. really seeing uh one another as much you know um like I said, you you and i davy we've had the luxury of working together for a little bit for the last couple months so that's kind of helped but then yeah. uh you have uh you know kevin who's you know trying to make his way up in the world just got his uh his his bachelor's degree his uh, electrical yeah, engineering i wouldn't say just anymore last year Almost a year now. Uh, yeah. Finally trying to get the job going. Got a couple of interviews going on. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, best of luck. Um, like I said, I know whoever does hire you, they'll be absolutely uh, uh, overjoyed by having you on board, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we 
we've uh, we've really struggled. At least me. Uh, I know I can speak for myself that I've really struggled with talking things out. Uh, kind of highlighting on what you mentioned, Davey, where it's like we're always in a better position when we can just talk things out. I mean, even if even if things are still going to be tumultuous and still going to, you know, we're still going to be stuck in <laughs> indoors. Hopefully not for too much longer now with uh, vaccines and all that stuff. Getting getting out there. Um, so that's that's obviously a great thing. Um, but a we've really had to adjust kind of the new norms and we really struggled to have these deep and meaningful conversations. I think that's part of the thing that was a catalyst for starting this podcast and really what I think we want to focus on uh, moving forward. Uh, but uh, just to, to kind of highlight uh, something that I'm looking forward to in the podcast I think I've kind of touched on it already, but just being able to talk things out and, and really self-reflect is something that I think we don't do enough of um, in society. And there's this negative stigma, especially uh, that's tied to mental health. And, you know, it's it's something that everyone has to go through at some point or another. And I really think that just talking stuff out just definitely helps. Um, I'm not sure if any of you want to piggyback off that yeah i you know and i think i think sometimes it is there's also this huge stigma for for males to just talk about your feelings Ugh. it's like you're not allowed to do that and especially as three adult men uh, big big burly men that we are um it's just it's tough because you kind of have this idea in the back of your head and even if you're not actively thinking about it of like oh I'm not allowed to talk about how I'm feeling. I'm not allowed to tell people that I'm sad or afraid or any of that because I have to present myself as this stoic man, you know? And and I've always kind of been against that, and, but even still, it's always kind of there for me of of I'm not allowed to tell you how I'm feeling. You're not allowed to know and I just got to push it down. But it, it's it's gonna be nice because uh, I know we're gonna be a free space to just talk about that and and tell you how I'm feeling when I need to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kevin, anything to add on? No, no man. It's a, I, you know what they say? It's called toxic masculinity for a reason, and no man is an island. Yeah, gotta relate. We are a, a social beings. Yeah, we are. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely by nature. I mean, that's how we've survived, frankly, as a species, you know? Um, yeah, I mean. What is that famous really... famous song line? Uh, you and me, baby, we're nothing but mammals. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, I believe <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> uh, all righty. Well, fair enough. <laughs> um, I don't know what more to add to that. <laughs> Uh, but I do want to at least highlight, as I probably should have at the beginning, but it's, it's all good. We're learning as we go, right? Uh, this is going to be uh, a, a two-part kind of episode uh, series. The first part here is going to be focusing on our friendship, uh, on kind of who we are, how we met. Uh, and then later on, we'll get into some deep questions. That should be fun. Start kind of getting the juices flowing. Uh, and then next episode is actually going to be a very, very good episode. It's going to be a history of Audible Anomaly because fun fact and possible spoiler to you, we did create this <laughs> back in 2013 the first time. And oh that was, let's be honest, not great. Uh, but we should have all the archive footage on YouTube. So if you want to endure that <laughs> for whatever reason... You can. <laughs> please don't. Just it's save already yourself on the trouble. There. It's already on there. No, no technically. No, please don't watch it. Oh, viewers. Oh. <laughs> I thought you saying please don't upload it. Do it. No, no, watch no. it. It's already done. And watch it. They were like an hour and a half long. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, they were bad. Yeah, and and we'll we'll get into a little bit more about what our actual goals are for the podcast and how the thought process of this and uh, kind of came along and a little kind of teaser into what we have planned, but also 
a kind of a look into the how we kind of came to this because we had a couple different iterations at first. At least I, I know I did that. I, I pitched a couple of times that were okay, but nothing is, I think, uh, well defined or as pointed or frankly as needed as I think this version that we're going with. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be a, a fun ride. I'm definitely looking forward to having y'all along for that uh but who wants to take the reins and talk about how we met well i feel like i feel like either of you two have to start because you met before i joined the picture i suppose that's true yeah we um we met working in an electronics store Mm -hmm. um josh you had been there longer than i had so i was a, a new guy to you My first memory of you is as we were getting ready to leave, you were talking to um, someone else, might have been Ariel, about um, a TV show. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was uh, um, the Molecular Gastronomy TV show with Marcel. You remember that one? Oh, um, oh God. What is the name of it? I don't know. So I heard you talking about that, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll go home and watch that. And I did. <laughs> and I, I watched one episode, and that was it. Discovered it was not for me. <laughs> but Damn. made that connection. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll be honest. I don't have, like, any memory earlier than later on in our friendship. Mm. Like, I have a... There's, like, a, I was there for so long, and it it kind of drained me quite a bit to the point where like a lot of those memories, like I'll have like isolated pinpoint memories. Like I think when I met George was probably only the first one, which was on my first day because it was such a long conversation. But other than that, like I don't honestly remember the first time I met either of you, (laughs) to be honest. I just remember that we clicked and in my mind, when I go back, it was always just, kind of the three of us we were always we just got along our humor was pretty much right in sync as much as sometimes Davey hates it um but yeah like that that's that's literally the the first thing that that I remember um it's always been the three of us as a unit yeah I I mean I remember and I guess I I could say like my first real memory of of josh was because i think when i started you both were part-time and i was full-time so i was working a lot of well you were both going to school so i think i think it was you guys were both part-time and i was i was full-time i was for sure part-time the entire time i know I was there yeah i did full-time work and full-time school for a short while i know i don't but know if it was, was that i don't know if that was that period i don't know because it was 2013. I was I I remember I was 19 years old when I started that job. Um and uh, I remember the first of, of you Josh was we were closing and how much you it was funny cuz it was like you did this comedic bitching of like closing duties. And you were like kind of complaining about it. It was kind of those moments of you you know in the movies there like it's the scenes of like oh this person's being all hyped up to get into this job into this job and then they get into the trenches with the real people and the real people are like yeah this sucks here's how you get through it it was kind of like one of those moments you know <laughs> it was kind of like a, yeah this job sucks and we all hate it here's how you get through it day to day um and then my first memory of Kevin was uh aisle 2 I remember he had control over aisle two and it was him showing me how to maintain an aisle. And he was the only one at the time that actually gave a shit about maintaining their aisle. Sounds about right. Yeah. I was pretty bad about that. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Everyone Kevin. was. No, I, I, you know, I think Kevin didn't give a shit about anyone else's aisle. He's just like, no, I'm just going to do my job. Yeah. Man. Um, which is I, which is what I've always loved about you, Kevin, is that that uh, you're always willing to do what you can to get your shit done, 
but you're not going to sit there and complain about other people's shit. At least not to them. Well, yeah. <laughs> Little less than most people. I will give you that. For sure. For Higher sure. tolerance for bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty darn accurate. Um, yeah, for some reason, the first memory that at least comes to mind, I know there were things that happened before, but for some reason, just the, if you were to tell me, what is your first memory of either of you? I remember our trip to Evo. Mm. And uh, and that whole, that whole fun thing. I mean, it, that was, I guess, toward the end where I, I feel like it started kind of declining after that evo in general mm. where like the, i just wasn't as happy with the experience they hiked up the prices they didn't offer as much i remember the first year that me and kevin went um we it was like what 20 bucks 25 bucks came with a shirt and like you had access to everything except for for, for sunday which is yeah. like normal um and then like the following year i think when you joined us it was like 40 bucks 45 bucks they didn't give you a shirt anymore and then i remember yeah, I it was the year of the fan or was that yeah, the third year the fan because i had the yeah. fan yeah um and then i remember two of us got three-day passes i think it was Dave. you didn't get the three-day right even yeah. though we paid for the two-day but they gave us a three-day for some reason and we could have gone. I think it was one that was at the Mendeley Bay that year. The final, mm -hmm. at least the final day was, um, in their arena. But I, I don't know why. I always the the picture that always sticks in my head was we're watching Smash. You two are on the other uh, bed, sitting on the like on the sitting up with on the backrest, and you're both just out, <laughs> just dead tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't notice because I was just watching. And I, all of a sudden, I hear a little bit of snoring. I couldn't tell you who, but I just heard a little bit, a bit of snoring. I'm just like, oh, oh, they're out. They're, I'm like, I'm just going to let them sleep. I think I passed out at some point, too, and then we all kind of woke up. But, but that's like the first thing I remember from all of us. Yeah, that was interesting. I remember we, we shared a bed that that uh, that trip, Josh. Yeah. We are both just kind of like, fuck it. Neither of us want to sleep on the floor. We're both cool with this. <laughs> There's three of us. Just don't beds. spoon me in the middle of the night. I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't happen. We're good. Uh, do do we sleep? We slept uh, feet to feet to head, like opposite side. I no, I think we slept. We slept or just normal. Normal. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. I really don't. Yeah, that's okay. One of my I try biggest... to forget. <laughs> <laughs> I look okay. I get it. I'm a bad sleeper. Um, really weren't. No, I, I, I stay in like one spot the whole night. Pretty much my, my like most vivid memory of the three of us was the 24 hour stream we did. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. that was wild because that was the first like long stream I've ever done. And it was I remember felt like so proud at the end of it. <laughs> and just like in, I remember the middle of the night specifically when we were kind of sitting there and I think. Josh, you were asleep, and, and then it was me and Kevin, and we were both kind of in this zone of, like, we're so tired, but we have to do something, and I think we were sitting there playing a board game, like, half-assing playing a board game, because none of us could, con we couldn't concentrate because we were so tired, and then you woke up, you started playing GTA, and me and Kevin just crashed. That's what I remember most. Oh, see, right. what I remember most from that was... I am like 85% sure I got food poisoning from lunch just before we started. Oh. Only like real minor. I was like, I almost left. Oh, Jeez. yeah. Yeah. Jeez. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was crazy. I remember we did the, the stream, but I don't remember anything from it. I don't know why. Like, just out of my memory. S sleep deprivation. Probably. <laughs> Gotta do that again, though. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, do you guys remember the Titanfall land? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. So when Titanfall the game came out, we were we were all hype on it, like hella hype. 
So we ended up getting together uh, in my parents or my mom's house. We set up uh, a table, a couple tables, set up all our rigs. We had a little bit of a ti- uh, of a LAN. Uh, GZ came out. Uh, one of my longtime viewers, Jav Buff or Javier, uh, he ended up coming down. So we were all just we streamed it. We had like the whole like production set up. I found the pictures the other day. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Like looking back at that, um, and yeah, it was, it, was, it was. I remember that being just like a really cool kind of experience of just like going old school, doing a land party. Thankfully, none of us got kicked off. Like, like the internet didn't go down or anything like that because that would have sucked. <laughs> but, but yeah, I remember playing the game. It was that was hella fun. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember that the most. Any other good, good memories? I mean, uh, our, uh, last year when we did the, um, the stream on my channel, mm-hmm. that was a lot of fun. We did that. The subathon? Uh, yeah. We did that water taste test. Mm-hmm. I love doing stupid shit like that with you guys. Even though we didn't, uh, we didn't pick it. The Kirkland Signature grapefruit was a Kevin's favorite, but I hate to say it. Kevin, uh, Davey and I said, uh, LaCroix was a little bit better. They're very similar, though. <laughs> They're very similar. Um, yeah, I mean, then then you have the the obvious one, my wedding. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. there was that. Uh, you got married? What? Yeah, I got married in twenty twenty. What? Insane, you might say. Kind of was, um, but yeah, I remember we had a little bit of like a pseudo bachelor party. The night mm. before, playing Among Us, that was that was hella fun. That was so much fun. And then, uh, you guys want to talk about the uh, the wedding cards? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, why don't you tell why don't you tell why don't you tell the audience about the wedding cards? Oh yes, okay. I was like, <laughs> wedding cards. What is what is he talking about? So, we were uh, searching for cards and we happened to run and Davey and I were searching for cards together we have to run on to two of the other um, guests who were also searching for cards so someone was like hey you know it'd be really funny if we all got the same card <laughs> yeah yeah great idea great idea what if we also wrote the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah great idea great idea what if we had it all in the same handwriting yeah yeah great idea <laughs> Yeah, it was the spiraled out of control, man. The entire um, bachelor side of the of the wedding party uh, all had the same card, the same writing, uh, and the same envelopes. It le- like it looked like someone had photocopied this like this five times. Can confirm. I think they're literally sitting to my right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I remember the only reason I was even tipped off at anything was awry was because Davey, you, when we were leaving, you said, Hey, hope you enjoy the cards. I didn't really know what to expect, but I knew that they were up to something. And then once we got back from our little mini staycation honeymoon, um, we we're opening up the cards and the gifts and stuff. And then we see the five cards we're like the heck and that's when i realized i remembered that you had said hey hope you enjoy the cards i'm like oh that's (laughs) what they did (laughs) got it so the funniest thing was that i i told my wife this and she was like okay i'm like i don't know it's pretty funny let's be real we both laughed about it and then i'm like okay how much you want to bet I can guess who wrote like this one, right? Or like who this one's from. So we open it and I said it was uh, the other best man, Ernie. Sure enough, it was Ernie's. I was like, <laughs> oh, damn. Like, I was just joking. Proceed to get the rest of them wrong. <laughs> but it was just that first one that happened to be like perfect. But that was that was pretty funny. That That's something that sticks out of my mind uh, quite a bit. Um, 
but yeah, I, mean, I think I think another at least memory or memories, I should say, technically, is helping you out, Davey, with uh, strictly for the bit. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, honestly, it's been. I, I you are as much as part of you are as much a part of strictly for the bit in my eyes than than me or James. Honestly, you are as much of that team. Yeah, yeah, you know? and it's. Like I said, I just wanted to help, and that's how I figured I can help, and I've become a bit apparently. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a hey, it's a funny bit. Yeah, I just gotta remember to shrug. That's all. You know, the funny, the funniest thing to me was is that I feel like there was some hesitancy on James's part because he was like, you know, this is our show, this is kind of our thing. You know, I don't want him to like. It's not that he didn't want you, but he didn't want like now a new element and like this intrusion. And I was like, no, 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 that's not going to be a problem. He's there to listen. He's there to produce, but yeah. he calls out to you way more than I ever do. He and is the, the one that funny. calls me out. Yeah. I don't think I ever do. I think I'm always no. just like, it's just me and James. And then he's always like our producer, Josh, and he'll turn to you and he'll like, and what do you think? And it's, it's so funny to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was the one thing that I, even I was like, I don't want to be a part of this. Like I, well, I, I want to be a part of it, but I don't want to be, like, brought in because I'm like, right. this is your guys' thing. <laughs> but for some reason, he's just always, you know, he always just make eye contact or something. I, and, yeah, he's just, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I'm here. It's a fun bet. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but, yeah, if, if if you guys haven't checked out Strictly for the Bit, uh, why don't you give us a quick uh, elevator pitch? Oh, uh, strictly for the bit. It is um, this, but unorganized and uh, raunchy and um, absolutely none of it is is talking from the soul. So uh, there's moments. There's, <laughs> okay, moments. there's moments. Yes. But it, it, it's very much just a conversation between two friends um, who may talk a little dirty and, and mostly in bits. That's. That's what it comes down to. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, at Strictly for the Bit on yeah, uh, Insta much. and wherever you find your podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously going to give that, s- that a plug because I am also part of it. But also I think it's just a hilarious podcast. Yeah. Being honest. Uh, all right. Any any other, any other uh, memories or anything before I move on, what do you remember, Kevin? Not much. The I remember the a lot of random like work days, but mm. nothing exciting. Sometimes the friendships are are like really birthed in those mundane days. In my mm. eyes, you know, totally, very much so. A couple of years of that you get to really know someone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially in those day to days, you know. Yeah. Tell me what you remember about Pat versus Ivan. Oh. <laughs> so I think we were all there for that, right? I was. Were you there for that? Day? No. Okay. No. Okay. Before my time. I I'm not even sure that it was before your time. Mm-hmm. Like you joined us only like three, four months after I joined the company. Yeah, but that was enough for things to happen. Mm, that's true. You were definitely invited if you were around, because we invited everyone. Yeah. I Yeah, I don't remember it at all. Do you have a haircut appointment? <laughs> Do you think I've had a haircut appointment ever? I don't think he gets that one, which is almost sad. A little bit. It's the Eddie excuse. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so at the electronics store, we work with a guy by the name of Eddie. We'd always invite him out to stuff, but he would never show. He'd always say maybe, but as soon as he said maybe, you knew it was a no. So one time, we specifically pressed him on this, and he said, oh, yeah, it's because I had a haircut appointment that I forgot about. We're just like, so ever since ever since then, we're like, we'd ever ask him, uh, hey, you want to come on out? Like, oh, or do you have another haircut appointment? <laughs> I think only one time did he ever actually come out. Really? Wow. You got him at once? Yeah, it was once, and we're just like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was bad. But it was the Eddie excuse. 
But uh, Pat versus Ivan. Right, right. I remember so many of the people in our department showed up. That, that really surprised me. Um, yeah. It was, I remember Jason, Aaron, it was at his house, Pat, yeah. Ivan, Ariel. Um, you and I, obviously. I think us, Kitty showed up for a while, didn't I she? I think Kitty did show for a little bit. Uh, Joby, who's good friends with Aaron. Yeah. We didn't know he would soon work with us. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was before that. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of it's us. A wild and crazy night, man. Yeah. So, so set the stage. What, what's, what, like, what sparked that? Right. So, Ivan, the, uh, can we call him a world class Marvel two player? Marvel's Capcom two, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So he was talking about the game, and Patrick. Uh, one of our co-workers came by and was talking big. So they decided to throw a little money down uh, and then have a fight. So we organized it, got an audience, bets were made. And then uh, Patrick was just absolutely crushed. It was brutal, man. I remember. So the main reason why I was like, hey, I'm down to like come down i i filmed it Mm. i recorded it filmed it and then like we did like pre i I did uh pre-match interviews with them with both of them (laughs) as well it's like oh why do you think you're gonna win you know and then we get into the games and it was five games i don't remember what the five were but it was five games that was supposed to be played across i remember marvel and smash i think we halo was played later but that wasn't part of it no that was definitely because we're just trying to redeem stuff at this point um yeah i, I remember those five games that, that were played across to like try and and yeah it just it wasn't even close i didn't even bother editing anything together because i'm like well this isn't even worth the time but i did upload the uh aaron and jason fight mm, mm. that was very high stakes there yeah a little <laughs> bit a little bit it I was lost money on that one too oh, to be fair that was literally a, a coin toss it started out so well for one of them and then yeah. just totally took a turn i think uh <laughs> i want to say aaron won that at some point aaron just like so. committed suicide on smash and then like it was and then all of a sudden it just like momentum just took over. Yeah. But yeah. I remember at one point they were fighting on opposite sides of the map. <laughs> it was oh it was like they couldn't remember which character they were <laughs> and they just guessed. Yeah. Yeah. Re- real real high intensity there. Mm. Uh you could say it was the most epic elliptical battle of all proportions. That was literally a quote from Jason. Yeah. That I would never forget. It was so dumb. Uh, but yeah, that was <laughs> that was that's probably one of the f- more funny funny moments I think I've with with you, uh, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. And I, like I said, I I, I just I shoehorn you in, David, just because we've been through so much that I just assume you're there at this point. <laughs> We're all kind of like brothers in that regard. I get it. Yeah, I look like a lot of people. I hear it all the time. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i uh i think it's time to segue over into our uh friendship questions now davy mm-hmm. you on strictly for the bit do a little bit of a bit where mm-hmm. you ask 32 questions is it uh 36 questions to fall in love there it is I've mm-hmm. I've seen it titled different things too. I've seen uh, to grow closer, etc. But they're overall just pretty good questions. I thought that'd be a good thing to kind of bring into at least this, you know, to talk about our friendships, see what we think. Uh, but I didn't want to use the thirty six questions because that just seems kind of yeah. cheating. Plus, you've already answered a, com- a couple of them. Yeah, you're almost through them at this point. Yeah, we are. Holy shit. Yeah. So I, I thought. So I looked around and I found 210 questions to ask your friends. And we all picked 
three, just in case there is some overlap. But uh, we're, I thought it'd be fun to just go around and ask the question. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure which one of you guys wants to go first. Um, I'll go first. All right. Uh, I tried to pick a question that kind of revolves around the, the idea of us introducing ourselves. Um, okay. So uh, do you think your life story could be made into a good biographical movie? Oh, okay. So, biographical movie. Huh. Damn, that's that, that's a good one. It's a good one. Um, I'm gonna say mine, absolutely. Mostly because I've had a lot of different, random, kind of crazy things happen. Um, when I was, I think four, I was doing, uh, the beauty pageants, you know, the little, little okay. kid, pa little kid pageants, you know, um, I remember ever hearing about this. Oh, 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 trust me. This is, I, I guess this is one of my, like my go-to fun fact about me that like no one would ever guess, um, until now, I guess, but my mom did that so I could get over like stage fright and not be like nervous or anything. Um, and I, and I just, I worked it, I guess I was a cute kid. What can I say? Uh, I had blonde hair, bright blonde, like almost bleach blonde. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, but I, uh, I remember it was 1996. I ended up actually winning Mr. California Ooh. in my division. I got, I think runner up the year prior, but I got that, so that was kind of cool. Uh, and then I grew up playing soccer or football uh, quite a bit. Got pretty good. Played for an MLS Academy team with Chivas USA. So that was pretty cool. And then all of a sudden, depression in high school hit. And we'll talk about that in a future episode because that's a whole story, a whole saga in and of itself that I think a lot of people would find relatable like diary of a wimpy kid status relatable. <laughs> um, so like just that emotion and all that good stuff. And then uh, adulthood just in general, the ebbs and flows of day-to-day of -day life of trying to figure what the hell I want to do in life. And like, I just think it's a relatable story and that's part of the reason why really wanted to create Audible Anomaly in this form because I think I have a lot to give in that regard and I think it'd make a pretty good movie. Interesting. See, I feel like I've also had a lot of random experiences but that would not make for a good movie because nothing really gets seen through to the end. I, mean, I guess I just didn't have um, the same level of commitment to achieve what you did with your random tangents it was like oh i'll try this out i'll try that out nothing ever came from like 90 percent of it so it just doesn't seem like there's a, a good arc there that's fair what about you davy well so here's the thing is i have i i the amount of times that i have imagined my own life story as a movie is immeasurable cannot count how high but no, I think I think uh, I have I have unfortunately have the perfect sad story beginning of any movie. Right, I've got a great way to start a movie on a sad note to create the underdog. Um, and I've you know I've got a lot of avenues in my life that if you did a this is uh, based off a true story movie, I would I you know you could make it good. I mean, if you just take my whole improv career. That whole ten years, you can make it a pretty good little little uh, little movie. I think would be, uh, but uh, like as far as like a biographical piece, well, you know what? We'll see. Give me another fifteen years to sort my life out, and then we'll talk. Yeah, I mean, once the podcasts take off, you know, we're we're in business, yeah. baby. 
Yeah. And then I'll get into drugs and alcohol and sleeping around and eventually I'll crash and then you guys will have to come talk to me out of it. And then, you know, once the, you know, and then we'll ha end up doing a separate podcast that's just grassroots back to the beginning because we lost our way. Yeah. Mm hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know why or how you got your hands on so much rubbing alcohol, but, you know, whatever. I know a guy. <laughs> sometimes he <laughs> sleeps on the bed. Sometimes he's on the couch. Oh, he's sleeping around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, okay. That was, that was, Good that question. was a great one. Thank uh, you you want to go next, Kevin, or do you want me to go? Sure. No, no, I'll take this one. Okay. Is happiness more imp more important than other states ah i saw mm. that one mm. i saw that one i almost picked that one um you want to go for Davy or sure uh yes and no happiness is always the end goal but you need to f hit every other emotion to get there right happiness is where you always want to end so it's important to have that goal, but to get to the goal, you, I mean, you can't feel happiness without feeling sadness or anger or jealousy or, or constipation. You know what I mean? Like you have to kind of hit all of those notes along the way to get to happiness. So in a way, yes, but also in the other way of like, well, no, you know, happiness is only happiness with everything else. So I mean, that's, that's kind of how I feel and, and, and the way I perceive the state of emotions and a state of being. Yeah, uh, very much, very much agree along those lines. Um, it was, I want to say summer camp of 2010 for me, where I was taking a social justice course. Um, and one of the topics that we talked about was, you know, happiness and stuff. And one of the... Um, one of the concepts that we kind of talked about or and discussed was you never really comprehend true happiness until you've fully understood true sadness. I think it's only in one of those uh, w once you know one, you can understand the other just because like you mentioned it, I think happiness builds off of all the other emotions. Um, I mean, especially now, I think society in, in general, we're starting to see a downward trend in, I guess, happiness levels. You know, we're, you're hearing a lot more about depression and anxiety and, and all these these different things. But I, I do think that ultimately those are, I think, just as important as happiness, just because if we're happy all the time, don't really get be uh, benefit from that. You know, you need those those lulls to really truly appreciate the highs. So I I don't I'd argue that they're almost not more important, if not less important, or happiness is less important to an extent. Now I still think happiness is obviously the goal, and whatever happiness is to you, you know that could be success, that could be money, that could be uh, recognition, status, whatever, right? But I I do think ultimately the goal is to be able to you know, while you're on your deathbed, be able to say, hey, I lived a pretty happy life. Like, I got no complaints. Sure, we messed up a lot. We're human. But at the end of the day, you know, we had a good life. Sure, sure. I feel like I definitely agree with you guys. It is about the balance and the perspective that one gives to the other. But I would argue that in the meta-analysis of that, that does make happiness more important because it is the goal. No one's really trying to be sad. No one's really trying to be angry. They're trying to be happy. So <laughs> You've never know. met it's an actor then. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. You've got something going there. <laughs> you know. No, I, I mean, I agree with you in that case of like, yeah, uh, the, the, the goal is to be happy. I don't like there is no one who wants to be angry. I mean, there are people who find some solace in anger or, or sadness or whatever. But in the end of the day, they want to go to bed happy, you know, yeah. everyone does. Yeah. That's pretty fair assessment. I'd say. Yeah. All right. 
All what right. Got? What do I got? I got four here. Wow. None of them were the ones you picked. So what happened to we each have three? There was two hundred questions. Of course, like there was a good chance none of us were going to pick the same question. <laughs> there was, but also there's a lot of like, what's my favorite color? Like, yeah, blue. True. <laughs> um, it's like a fifty-fifty shot, though. Really. Um. Oh, which one do I want to go with? All right, I'll go with this one. What's the toughest decision you've ever had to make? Um, I and and, I, and really, this is just because it's the first thing that comes to mind. But uh, the most recently was 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 leaving a job that I had taken a gamble on. After uh, the computer parts store, I had taken a position with a friend of mine who was running in a, an arcade. And the idea was is he wasn't technically savvy and he didn't really know what he was doing. And I came in as kind of someone who had customer service experience and technology experience. And, and I could set up all of this stuff for him. And uh, unfortunately, and I'm sure this will end up being a full story later on in the podcast, uh, but th things came to a head and he had decided, or I, well, whether he decided or not, that they no longer needed me in a management position and they wanted to make me a regular employee. I, I, I ended up having to make the decision of just leaving that environment and trying to find another job without the stability uh, uh, of background of uh, making money, you know, cause I wasn't in a necessarily a good financial position. Um, I wasn't at all, but I, I had to make that choice, you know, and, and the, overall I'm better for it. I'm glad I left the, the, the toxic environment it was, but it was, a, it's a tough choice to make to, to say, I can't live in this toxicity anymore, but I don't have the money to survive. What do I do? And so that was, that was a tough, tough decision on my end. Yeah, I remember when you were going through that. You were not always in the best place. Yeah. yeah. Glad you got out of it, though, and things are going better for you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All relative, you know. All relative. Uh, I guess my toughest decision was my most recent move. I had finished college trying to find a job in my field uh, and I ended up deciding to move further away from where a lot of job prospects were um, for the same sort of mental health reasons just a more comfortable environment um, where I could feel well more comfortable more myself more, a little more freedom and it was cheaper um, but that just that balance of do I go for uh, better job prospects and just tough it out, hoping to get something and then move, or do I move now? Try to figure something out later. It's a tough one. That is, I I went so something very 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 similar, um, just in the last year with my family moving. So I I get it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of went through that myself when I ended up moving out and eventually in with my now wife. That was. That was definitely an experience to kind of go through and still kind of dealing, I feel, like, with the repercussions from that. Mm -hmm. uh, since, at least for me, like, I think in both your cases, your family kind of moved out. Yeah. Me, I was the one that was doing the moving out. So it was like, she, my mom, I know, took that very hard and I think still kind of is, is taking that a little bit tough, I'm sure. Um, just because... I'm her oldest. I'm her baby. I'll always be her baby, you know, but you know, being the first one to, to move out and you know, I, I'm sure, like I said, it, it, it weighed on kind of both of us for a bit. I know that I know for me for sure. And I know for, for her probably. Um, but I think the toughest decision I've ever had to make is finding a damn major <laughs> to, <laughs> because yeah, I've I've kind of gone through a lot of different things. I think I've been going to school technically since 2014. 
and I only just got an associates. Um, I started off as a mechanical engineering major, uh, got through to multivariable calculus. And I thought to myself, Hey, I can do this. Like, sure. I got to think a little bit, but like, I'm no longer finding happiness in mm. a lot of the things that I'm doing, you know? So I, it was a really hard conversation to have with, with my mom um, and kind of be like, Hey, I'm, I'm not happy. And I know like probably like a fraction of what I do will might actually end up, you know, being what I use in the field, but I'm just no longer finding happiness in this like at all. It's like, it's starting to like weigh on me quite a bit. And like, I'm starting to dread it and like, it just wasn't good. And the only reason I even recognized that was because Kevin, other Kevin, my best man, um, he ended up going through something similar. So I was able to kind of like see the signs and like he, I forget what he was doing. I think it was like physical therapy or, or, or something like that. Um, so he's going through like all the anatomies and stuff and he was just miserable. And I'm like, I'm feeling very, very similar to that. So then I, I kind of went around, I ended up doing, um, I was like, Oh, you know, criminology kind of forensic science detective work kind of sounds really cool. I love like solving like mysteries and puzzles and things like that. Um, like that, that sounds like it'd be very cool using you know a lot of deductive and, and uh, reasoning and stuff. Um, but then I'm like, nah, it's not really, I don't, I don't know if that'll, that'll be right for me. Um, and then I ended up going to chemistry cause I love chemistry still do. Um, at one point I memorized like the majority of the periodic table just cause hmm. I don't know why. Um, and then I ended up on, uh, on business somehow, like out of nowhere. I just, I was taking a bunch of classes. I was trying to fulfill my GEs. So I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me take a business class. Like I know in my family, a lot of people are entrepreneurs. They run their own businesses or something like that. So I'm like, you know, it runs in the family. It It's very appealing to me. Like I love the idea of like, you know, management and, and, and the decisions that they have to make and, you know, and getting businesses forward and stuff. So I ended up taking a class. And I just really enjoyed the, the the philosophy, the psychology behind it, the you know, and the theory you know behind business and like how to improve and and I just I, to this day I still absolutely enjoy it. You know, I, I remember when I took my financial accounting class, uh, I enjoyed that one the most. You know, being able to read financial statements and knowing exactly what the hell is happening and all that stuff. Like it's it it's just very interesting, kind of to me. And then. Um, I guess more recently I've kind of found the world of, of data analytics and I've kind of realized that this is like that detective work and the, the, the business philosophy uh, and like, it's kind of everything that I was kind of looking for in a central role. So I'm just like, well, f if I would have known this about five years ago, <laughs> you know, we'd be off to the races. But, you know, I sometimes feel like you you have to go through everything else to appreciate what is you have in front of you, what you're able to, to kind of accomplish. So, so now I'm kind of going through that. So I definitely think that's probably the toughest decision that I've, I've had to make. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a tough decision for a lot of people is just like finding where you want to go in life, you know? And, and, and I can, I can speak like, cause, and I have to say, I've always known what I've always wanted to do for my entire life, right? Be an actor, be an entertainer, right? It's always been my thing, but my decision always comes like the opposite of yours of like, well, I can't do that. What do I got to do now? You know, but there's a lot of people who struggle just to find, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. That's, it's tough. It's a, that's a very tough thing for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, I know this conversation I had the other day with, with the wife, you were watching the, uh, operation varsity blues, uh, documentary on the admission scandals, the college admission scandals. Mm. And, uh, and we just had this conversation, whole deep conversation of like, 
I absolutely hate the idea of straight out of high school going to four-year college. There's, there's so much pressure and like anxiety that people go through. Like, am I going to get in? Are they going to accept me? That's like, you can have like a 4.0 freaking all the APs you can possibly hope for, like a bajillion extracurriculars and then like still get denied. And it's like, you see a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of people, you know, who take that very, very badly. And it's like, why in the world are we putting, you know, that, that sort of pressure on, uh, onto, on, on, on really on, onto our youth, really. You know, that's yeah. kind of why I like the the gap year idea of of like I think it's uh, Britain where no matter what after high school I believe you take a year off, go work, and then after that you can go to uni or college, which is just like it's not a bad idea. You know, and that's why I enjoy also the the junior college the community college route too because it's like you don't have as much pressure you're not spending as much of trying to figure out especially if you're in a position like me where you don't really know what you want to do or you have an inkling but you don't really know and rather than committing four years and trying to make sure you get good grades you can kind of wing it and find out where you want to fall yeah, yeah. I, go ahead oh i'm just saying like this, i think one of the reasons why the schooling system has been so difficult for a lot of people is right out of high school that they, they go get the four year degree that they think that they should have. And then it's not what they want to do. And now they spent a hundred thousand dollars on something they don't need anymore. You know, uh, call, I, I think community college is, is, is super beneficial for a lot of people. I mean, I went to community college and I realized I don't want to go to school. <laughs> 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 and so I stopped, but I didn't spend a lot of money, you know. I just spent the the couple hundred on classes that sure, you know, I had fun doing them and I learned what I needed to learn about myself and I and I realized, well, I like learning, but I don't like school. Right. Yeah, yeah. I did university straight out of high school. Ended up um dropping out for a year. The pressure is intense, and for a lot of kids, it's just their parents pushing them into uh, college or into a specific major. Yeah. So you see tons of attrition from the harder majors, like the engineering, uh, pre-med, pre-law, that sort of stuff, where kids just can't deal with it. Yeah. And in college, right out of high school, you are definitely still a kid. There is a ton of pressure for someone your age. I mean, there's people who are literally 17 years old going into college because they got out of high school. You know, it, it's, you know, you're still a teenager, essentially. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. It's like you don't fully understand how the world works yet. It's like I really don't think you become an adult till probably, what, 25, realistically? Like the, yeah. I think the brain the theoretically brain is... stops developing at 25 or something like that. Yeah, I think it was like the frontal cortex or I want to say it's that that like it, that's like your logic center that I think doesn't develop till around twenty five yeah yeah and now it's all downhill from here so yay oh that's why they call it over the hill right <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's 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 just absolutely wild to me um, and I, I I mean to an extent I know I had that pressure as well and I'm straight out of high school I'm just like no. It's, just no, like I, I'm gonna do things on my own terms, even if they end up going absolutely terribly wrong. <laughs> but those are lessons I think I have to learn on my own. Yeah, you know, I feel like we've got a lot to talk about if we do an episode on schooling. Oh hmm. boy, <laughs> that's why I pitched the idea. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I and I wrote it down. Yeah, put yeah, write it down. Someone, someone write. Someone get a pen. Someone write this down. I'm busy. He's busy with his with his with his uh his coffee. My Denny's coffee. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Nope. Sorry. Hold on. Let me just. There you go. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, do either of you want to throw in a last question or want to call it here? I think this is a good place. I think I think we have a lot to talk about, but we've got plenty of time to do it. 
Oh, absolutely. Sorry. You're good. You're good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited for for what uh, what the podcast has to to offer. I'm definitely looking forward to the conversations. And if you guys in the you know in in the comment section or on social media, you guys can find us at at Audible Anomaly on Insta, Twitter, and uh, it should be Audible Anomaly on YouTube as well. But uh, yeah, if you have any ideas, feel free to just ping them our way. Let me ask you this question, mm -hmm. Josh. Where can people submit questions they want answered? Ah, if you do want uh, to submit those questions, you can email them to us at audibleanomaly at gmail.com. And then, or like I said, any of the socials, you can find us there. Um, as long as you ping us, we'll be able to see that. And like I said, we'll, we'll definitely take your questions. And I think part of the uh part of the concept or the idea for the podcast is that after these first two kind of initial hey this is who we are this is our dynamic this is what the podcast is about we will start opening it up more to kind of everyone um and we'll start asking you guys some questions getting your feedback on certain things most of the episodes will have some sort of theme behind them so we'll We'll go ahead. We'll ask you guys ahead of time um, for your input on that. Uh, and then we will collect all your questions. And if we have enough of them, we'll do a whole episode of just ringing through questions. Um, yeah. Kind of getting your feedback. And like I said, if you're going through something, hey, you know, we, we probably feel you. We've probably been there ourselves. I think we're, we're at a stage in our life where we've kind of been through the ringer, you know, quite a bit. So I think we're, we're at that point where we understand a little bit better than we did when we first tried this experiment mm. Um, mm. for sure uh, and learned a lot from that. So I definitely want to kind of move forward. And like I said, we're not perfect. We don't plan to be, we don't expect to be. That's okay. You know, we want to create a safe space for everyone to, you know, be able to come in, you know, and say what you feel. You know, that's ultimately, I think that, that alone will help drive society forward in a much better and more positive way. But uh, yeah, don't know if you guys have any final comments before we wrap up here. Just thank you. Um, make sure to follow us on all the socials at uh, Audible Anomaly. At Audible Anomaly. Um, you're welcome to uh, follow me um, on Twitch.tv at dprl tron t r o n um i'm also on any social at that if you can find me i can't promise that i'll post things but i will respond please don't follow me it makes me <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> stranger in the streets <laughs> uh so don't follow uh kevin but uh you can instead follow I said at Audible Anomaly on all the socials, and I am at Bromium, B R O M I U M. If you guys want to find me there, do a little bit of uh, the podcast here. Will eventually be live streamed on Twitch at Bromium, and I do a little bit of uh, YouTube stuff also at Bromium. So, got to get on that a little bit more. But you yeah, know, one project at a time. <laughs> We finally got this one off, uh, so I'm I'm excited for that and, and really really looking forward to to what the future holds here. Uh, but uh, yeah, just to wrap up, uh, thank you guys for for listening for watching, and uh, we hope uh, we hope you guys stick with us because it's going to be a fun ride. Bye.